Hello and welcome to day one of the standard qualifier weekend. So now this is a tournament where if I make it to day two and then I do well day two, I will earn an invite to not only the arena championship, but also the pro tour. So I have this nice little token here. We, uh, I have a nice little token that lets me enter. And I know standard is about to rotate soon, but the format for this event is standard. Something for us to do before, of course, Outlaws of Thunder Junction is well and ready to go. Uh, fairly soon. So this is going to be day one and uh, hopefully we do well. I've actually d uh, have spent some time testing this format uh, once I finished my road to rank one series and um, with my play style I think ultimately I decided to go with the deck that you see in front of you right now. No frills, nothing fancy. I am playing Esper midrange and I'm going to quickly go over the deck just because by this point, most of you should know what this deck does just because well this deck has been around for over two years, but what is it trying to do? Well, it's looking to play creatures early. It's it's kind of an aggro control deck. You have your removal here in three copies of Cutdown and four copies of Go for the Throat just to deal with um, any threats that your opponents might play. Very, very good against aggressive decks. Then you have four copies of No More Lies. A lot of decks play three, but I'm choosing to play the full four. I'm a sucker for counter spells. So four copies of No More Lies as a nice way to deal with uh, opponents' creatures. Very, very uh, good. When you can put a, put a threat into play early and then use the No More Lies to just stop whatever your opponents might do. Then you have our two drops. We have uh, four copies of Deep Cavern Bat. I think this is the most important two drop to play in this particular build. Just because it's a nice two mana threat to deal with, to kind of disrupt what your opponents are trying to do. And it also combos very well with Rafine because it gives you a nice life linking flyer that can potentially grow if you play turn two Deep Cavern Bat into turn three Rafine. Additionally, you have two copies of Denik, Pious Apprentice. This is just another very good card against aggressive decks. Also good against potential reanimation strategies if that exists. And then also just gives you value in mid-range matchups because you can also disturb this into play and put a 3-2 flyer into play. The only reason why there aren't more copies of this card is because, of course, this creature is legendary. If it wasn't, you would probably see up to four copies of Denik being played in the Esper decks. Then we have three copies of the World Champion, Fairy Mastermind. 2 mana 2 1 flying flash creature. This creature has gotten a little bit worse. It used to be an automatic 4 of. Some people still play 4 copies of this card, but I think this card has gotten worse just because uh, there's a lot of flyers that people play. You know, when you play against the Demir midrange deck, for, for example, uh, having this trade with like a Siren, uh, Stormcaller Siren is not especially great, but very, very good against the Bant Ramp deck that's like, that plays, for example, uh, up the Beanstalk. So any, decks that's, that's, any deck that's looking to draw cards, this does a lot of work. Then we have two copies of Virtue of Loyalty. This is kind of a mid-range uh, Mirror Breaker. It lets you kind of play that Drago strategy where you go past mana with, uh, let's say you have two mana up, you can play either Virtue of Loyalty or Fairy and Mastermind or keep up no more lies and then in the late game if you ever slam virtue of loyalty all of a sudden all your creatures start growing so this can do a lot of work there the this used to play more copies of this but a lot of the green mid-range decks have been playing a lot more copies of tranquil frillback so i think the effectiveness of enchantments are kind of going down a little bit so i'm only playing two copies of the virtue of loyalty here moving on we have four copies of rafine scheming skier uh, scheming seer this is the reason to play white you could either play Demir Midrange or you can play Esper and play Rafine. This is an incredibly powerful three mana card. Really, really great in all matchups. And again, the reason why you should play Esper, very, very good. Then I'm playing four copies of Preacher of the Schism. Now this is the card that you see in basically every other black midrange deck. You see this in Golgari midrange and you also see this in Demir midrange. And I'm thinking, well, why don't you play it in Esper midrange? Well, because you have access to the wedding announcement, but I, I, you know, I, I've preferred the Preacher of the Schism a little more. Mostly because, like I said, Tranquil Froback is a thing. And uh, because of that, I just don't want to have a creature that just gets dice that a splash damage from Tranquil Froback. And Preacher of the Schism is also just better against aggressive strategies. A 3-mana 2-4 Death Touch body is really, really nice and just blocks anything that the aggressive decks can do. Moving on, we have two copies of the Wandering Emperor. You can choose to play the Wandering Emperor or Shieldred or Urtide. There's a lot of different cards you can play, but I do like that the Wandering Emperor goes really well with the uh, the draw-go strategy of keeping up mana for no more lies. So I do like the Wandering Emperor, but 
Again, Shieldred is also quite nice. You can play it because it is a nice combination with Rafine. If you expect a lot of aggressive decks, then Rafine into Shieldred is really, really great. So that's something else to consider. Then we have one copy of Aklazots. This is, this is a card that's re really, really good in the mid-range matchups. Also fine against aggressive decks because it's a 5-mana 4-4 four, four flying lifelinker. But particularly against decks like Golgari mid-range and Demir mid-range, if you can resolve an Aklazots, I mean, it's just a really, really tough to deal with threat. Then we have the lands, four copies of the creature land here in Restless Anchorage. And one note is that I'm playing 27 lands. Most versions of Esper play 26, but I just found that the thing that's really bad about Esper is its mana base. And so, uh, you know, I just think playing 27 lands makes a lot of sense. You also have the three of the spell lands that you're playing in this deck, along with four of the creature lands, and then also two copies of the cycle lands. So I do think you can uh, up the land count without really affecting the um, effectiveness of, of the deck. Quickly moving on to the sideboard here, we have a fourth copy of Cutdown for aggro, a couple of duresses for control, three copies of Path of Peril uh, against aggressive decks, particularly the Boros Convoke deck, second copy of Aklazots for the mid-range matchups, two copies of uh, Destroy Evil. Uh, the Destroy Enchantments is very, very good against the, uh, the Domain decks. It's also just good against the in the Mirror or Golgari because you kill Preachers, Wedding Announcements, or Fiends, etc. Two copies of Disdainful Strokes for big things. Two copies here, you can't see it, of Tishana's Tidebinder. This is also good against kind of control decks. I don't really like it in mid-range matchups, but it's good against stopping Aftermath Analysts and also countering Atrax's ability. One copy of Kaito Shizuki for a little spice on the play. And then one copy of Gix's Command as a catch-all card against aggressive decks and also mid-range decks. So this is the deck, and let's go ahead and hop into our Qualifier Weekend Day 1. Let's choose our deck, Esper Mid. And submit, and let's get to town. Now, I only have two losses to give. These are best of three matches, and I need to hit seven wins. So this is a lot of magic that we're going to play. This is a lot, a lot of magic. But hey, let's get it. It's, it, it's nice to play for stakes while also playing standard. So going to play first here and see what we have. Opening hand looks pretty solid. Two lands, Fairy, Mastermind, Cutdown, Bat, Preacher, and Rafine. I'm going to keep this. Would like land number three, definitely. Uh, gonna lead out with the Shattered Sanctum here because it comes into play tapped, followed up by Island, and then choose between Fairy Mastermind or the Deep Cavern Bat, kind of depending on what they're doing. Most likely gonna play the Bat, though. Alrighty. Shattered Sanctum turn one. Our opponent did Mulligan here. And leading with Plains, Warden of the Inner Sky. So this tells me that they're likely playing the um, Boros Convoke deck. In which case, yeah, it makes a lot of sense to go Bat. Not only does it allow me to get um, a nice threat out of their hand, being, going Deep Cavern Bat into Rafine is very, very nice in this matchup. So let's see what they're working with. If they have um, Case of the Gateway Express, that's kind of what I want to take. Um, but they have two copies. So that's a little bit unfortunate. So I think I'm just going to take Resolute Reinforcements. I don't think it really matters what I take because I think they're going to play a case here no matter what. So it's a little unfortunate. It does kind of slow them down just a little bit. But yeah, they're definitely going to be casing my bet here and attacking me for one. Then now we have an interesting choice. I guess we don't have to cut down just yet. So yeah, I'm going to play... It's either Rafine or Preacher of the Schism. I think I like Preacher here. I just love Preacher in general. They can't attack me when I play the Preacher. And the next turn, if I play this... Ex excuse me, if I attack with the Preacher with the Rafine, that gets you a loot plus a token, which is nice. And it's got four toughness, so they can't really kill it either here. And if they play Resolute Reinforcements, even with the land, they're one mana short of actually casting the Knight Aaron of Eos, which is very nice. So Resolute Reinforcements, and I think they're just going to scry here. Because they can't play the Knight Aaron of Eos. Drawing a bat here, no, actually drawing a bat doesn't do much. Just because I can take Case of the Gateway Express. I mean, I can still take the case, but... The Knight Errant is kind of the annoying and problematic card. Opponent bottomed with Warden of the Inner Sky. Hmm. 
Yeah, I think I'm refining here. Let's attack. Make a token. Was kind of hoping to draw a land. Fairy Mastermind is not very good in this matchup, so let's discard that and uh, take it from there. They are a creature short of being able to kill my creature with Case of the Gateway Express. Uh, no, now they are not. But Rafine has Ward 1 and Preacher is a 3-5, right? So if they play Knight Errant of Eos, they can't use Case of the Gateway Express to kill either of my big creatures, which is pretty nice. Which is pretty nice. Now, we did miss land drop number 4, which is unfortunate. Really wanted to be able to hit that land. But it looks like, yeah, they're going to go for Knight Errant here. And yeah, that, now, I mean, they're going to have a very, very big board here that we're going to have to deal with. Hopefully, we can finish them off in time. They found Warden of the Inner Sky and Imodane's Recruiter. Okay. So yeah, that was a very, very big turn for them. All right, what do I want to do? Certainly want to attack with Preacher of the Schism. Do I want to also attack with the Rafine to get multiple triggers? Hmm. I can also attack with the Vampire token here just to get hu a huge um, Life Linker. That could be pretty good. I mean, I have a lot of stuff to discard. Yeah, why don't we just do that? All right. Because I also really want to find lands. Although, unfortunately, we couldn't find exactly what we needed here. One... Two... And, hmm. These lands are kind of bad, but I do want a giant lifelinker. I think maybe it's just Deep Cavern Bat. Yeah, okay. I mean, this threatens... Um, yeah, this is, this is pretty good. De no, definitely needed to discard three things so that it trades with the Knight Aaron of Eos. All right, and then I'm going to play Rafine's Tower just because this gets me the white source for Wandering Emperor, and I'm going to pass. This way I get to keep up No More Lies and also Cut Down, which I think is what I'm going to want to do, especially if they try to get me with the Imodane's Recruiter or if they try to get me with Case of the Gateway Express. And I do think I'm interested in saving my token here, if they try to play Case. Because if they play Land a Recruiter, I still don't think I'm dead. And then now we're going to cut down Warden of the Inner Sky. Oh, I should have just killed this right away. Oh, well. Because now Case of the Gateway gets the flip. That was a mistake. All right. I think we're still looking pretty good here. Um, I think I still just want to make a... Well, actually, I can mix this up here. I can now choose to make a big flyer just to try to close out the game. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, and we have to discard three cards. I think I do like Deep Cavern Bat here. Um, I think I can discard two lands and a Denik, probably. Also, although Denik is also pretty good here. It's possible I don't need another Preacher. No, I can discard Denik. Let's discard a land. See what they choose to do here. Yeah, I mean, this is looking excellent for us. Now we can Deep Cavern Bat away their Imodane's Recruiter. They have War Leader's Call, which is fine. And then we have Go for the Throat here for Knight Errant as well. So yeah, this is going to be really, really tough for them to get back from. 
And right. All right. You know, game one is really, really important against this Boros deck because um, after sideboard, it gets a lot better for us because we get to board in the three copies of Path of Peril, Gix's Command, Aquazots, and the Cutdown. But game one, the Bor I think Boros is the best game one deck in the format, but it gets much worse after sideboard because everybody has a pretty good sideboard plan against what you're trying to do. All right, how are we sideboarding here? Well, certainly uh, cutting the three copies of Fairy Mastermind. I do like shaving on my two mana cards because of the three Path of Perils that we bring in. Now the question is, what else do we want to take out? I do like the fact that Preacher and Rafine are just really good blockers in this matchup, so I don't think I want to get rid of those. I do like this big life linker. I wonder if it's just some number of these twos. Yeah, we can probably like shave a counter and maybe two of the Virtue of Loyalties. I think I like the Deep Cavern Bat a little more than Virtue just because you can get the draw where you go Flyer into Rafine, and I think that's better. And I don't think the um, casting Virtue of Loyalty matters that much in this matchup. So let's go with something like that. I could see maybe the fourth No More Lies actually being good. I do know that the Boros Convoke deck plays some number of Cavern of Souls, so it's all right, but... I think it's close between the two. Given the fact that you also have the Path of Peril, maybe it's better to play the No More Lies instead. Um, like I said, I played a little bit of Standard, but I haven't, certainly haven't played a ton. So I'm by no means an expert. Gonna keep this hand. I don't think you should just mulligan to Path of Peril. Um, particularly with this hand, I do have turn two Denik into Go for the Throat. So I feel like I have enough tools potentially to survive early. Where if I get to Gix's command, that can also be very, very good here. Our opponent did find a Cavern of Souls here. They mulliganed. Turn one, Novice Inspector. But of course, this deck is very, very good at mulliganing. Because, um, I mean, next turn they can just play Gleeful Demo Demolition. That would be very, very bad for us. Okay, they played a Warden of the Inner Sky. Okay, and then they're pumping the Warden. Okay, and they get to Scry. I wonder if I should be go for the throating this Warden. I th Ooh, maybe that's better? Yeah, that has to be better, right? With three cards in hand? I still have go for the throat for the Warden. Yeah, let's go ahead and Deep Cavern Bat. See what they're working... Oh, gosh. See... Had I killed the Warden, they wouldn't be able to... But now, I mean, they had double Knight Errant of Eos. That's really annoying. So they're going to play Knight Errant of Eos this turn. Which is very unfortunate. Yep. That's how you unmulligan. I just thought the Deep Cavern Bat would allow me to get the best thing that they have. But of course, they have the Knight Errant here. Um, we did draw Path of Peril. And we do have the bat, which is kind of awkward. I'm just going to go ahead and go for the throat this knight errant right away. Voldaren Epicure from the opponent. They might pump Warden of the Inner Sky. Looks like they're doing that. And then they might also keep up mana for... The Resolute... Actually, they can um, main phase Resolute Reinforcements if they really want to. Novice Inspector, okay. Oh, I see. So now they have a 4-5 um, Flying Vigilance Lifelink nonsense. So at this point, it's probably worth it to cast Path of Peril. They're going to get their Knight Errant back along with the Resolute Reinforcements, but I think it just... Uh, being able to kill these four creatures just buys me enough time to hopefully take over in the late game. So, uh, this has Flying Vigilance, destroy creatures with mana value 2 or less. I guess there is no reason not to attack here. If we're going to cast Path of Peril. Our opponent definitely sees it coming. All right. Hopefully this is going to be enough to buy us some time so we don't get run over. 
Sanguine Evangelist from the opponent is a very, very good follow-up. I want to use Wandering Emperor, actually. I want to use Wandering Emperor to exile that, if possible. Um, let's see, they can go Resolute Reinforcements next turn. Actually, maybe Gix's Command is just good enough there. But... I th Yeah, I mean, I think no matter what, I want to play the Wandering Emperor. And then follow that up with Gix's Command. And then we can use Gix's Command to make them sacrifice the biggest creature and also uh, uh, kill everything with power 2 or less. So this is uncounterable. Wow, double Imodane's Recruiter? Oh, that's disgusting. That's really gross. Okay. Well, we're going to play Wandering Emperor. The question here is, do I exile the Sanguine Evangel Evangelist? I think so. And then I can, well, the problem is they can play the Recruiter. Alternatively, if I tick up the Wandering Emperor... And then cast Gix's command, exile everything. They get a bat, but then I can make a, but then I can make a two-two. I, I guess that's better. All right, so let's play a land here. Cast Gix's command and two, and. Sack a creature. Now, if they draw a land here, that's that's where it gets really annoying because they can go Resolute Reinforcements into Imidane's Recruiter. So we still have a lot that we need to fight through here. But, I mean, I think this is the best that we have. And this is, part, this is the reason why the Boros deck is so powerful, by the way, is that it's actually quite strong against Sweepers because... Um, it's quite strong against Sweepers because of the existence of Knight Errant of Eos. Wow, Lithomantic Barrage so that they can kill my Wandering Emperor. That's fair. Okay. All right. Well, despite those Sweepers, I think we are behind. So... I think we can counter this. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, let's attack. And the thing is, they still have two clues and two blood tokens, which is kind of rough. But, you know, at least we got to fight through most of what they have. So hopefully we, um, the combination of Preacher the Schism plus Denik can get there for us. I think they're going to start looking to filter and find some answers. I'm surprised they're using the blood instead of cracking their clue. Ugh, another night arrow is so disgusting. Yeah. That's gonna be tough. And they found another Imodane's recruiter. Okay. Oh, all right there, friend. We have a Path of Peril, um, but I'm going to hold on to that one until they play everything out of their hand. Uh, everything gets haste, okay. Interesting. Let's block the 5-4 and then block one of the recruiters. Okay. 
And then let's go ahead and continue to attack. Oh, you know what I could have done? Oh, that was a mistake. That That's one thing I need to get better with Preacher of the Schism. I could have pained twice and I would have also drawn a card. And that might, that might actually be... Um, that might be game-breaking, definitely. That's unfortunate. Oh, well. Yeah. I should have drawn a card there. Oh, well. If they play the reinforcements, I think I just counter it. Okay. They're drawing a card. Yeah, they just have so many more resources. Invasion of Gobakan. Ah, oh, interesting. I'm going to make them pay the extra mana here. Tap them out. They're going to take the Path of Peril, but I mean, we're at the point where I have so much mana, it doesn't really matter. Now, of course, I don't really want the invasion to flip. But I guess if they do it this way, it will flip. Because let's say I block here. And let's say I block here. Then the invasion flips. So I don't want that. So I guess I just block here like this. Now invasion goes to one. Alrighty. So let's do this properly. There we go. I should have done that last turn. So that was, like I said, a very, very big error. What's the cleave cost on this still? I, I don't want to find out, but I'm just wondering. Um, I guess the invasion is going to flip here no matter what, right? So let's just play a preacher here. What a grindy game. So Invasion of Gobokan flipping is quite nice as it does give them an anti-wrath effect. Creatures you control get hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. Okay, yeah. This might be pretty tough to beat, to be honest. I think we need to keep attacking here. Okay. Um, finding a cut down for the evangelist is pretty good. I do think I want to do that now before so that they have the light shield array. But I want to make sure that the I can contain the battle cry. We have a blocker here in the restless anchorage for the flyers. All right. Yep. And they're doing a good job of playing around counter magic with this cavern of souls. So I guess I'm not upset that I only went down to three copies of No More Lies. All right, how are they attacking? Now, remember, they're at seven life. So we have at least four damage in the air that we can get in with, right? Let's activate this anchorage here and block one of their 2-2 flyers. But they will get a counter on the other two flyers. I'm not entirely sure if that's worth it for them, but... 
Gleeful Demolition, not much we can do about that. They're at seven, we're at seven. So we will get more triggers off the Preacher. Now they can line up a pretty big block here. They can line up a pretty big block to just kill my two Preachers and they would lose their Light Shield Array. That is a lot of 1-1 tokens, I'm just going to say. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, well, we do have life-linking tokens, which is pretty nice. This is actually a very big turn, so let me just sit here and think about this really quick. All right. Um, yeah, this is really tough. I think I want to attack with the Preachers. And probably just the Preachers. Actually, no, I can attack with one. Yeah. Let's do this. This way I can still block and keep up go for the throat here. Um, and I just, like I said, I just have a, I just have a lot more options this way. Okay, they are going to three and they're setting up for a very, very large alpha attack. And we will pass. I think with our five 1-1 one, one lifelinking tokens, we should be fine here. Um, because we can block like five tokens here. We take five and then we take four and yeah, we should be fine. Based off of just that, but we'll see what else that they have. Warden of the Inner Sky, we can't do anything about that. I don't know that they have a great attack here. Okay, they're continuing to attack with their flyers. So I wonder if they're going to set up a Light Shield Array Sacrifice, given this type of attack. We will see. The thing is, I can kill them with my flyers if they attack with their flyers, right? So I don't know how good that this is going to end up being for them, given that I have um, double restless anchorage and they're at three life, right? So let's like we wait, let's just be very careful with our tapping. Um, we tap that for white, tap this for blue, tap this for colorless, and then we activate. Then we go to blockers, block here, block here, block here, block here. Sure. What do they have? Oh, interesting. Okay. I see. I see. So now they have a way to remove my flyer. The question is, do I still have enough to kill them on the ground? They're at three life and they have four blockers. I think so. Because I'm not losing all my creatures. I just need one of them to get through. I'm losing three of my creatures? Okay, we're at four. Yeah. I guess I should have done this beforehand, but they're dead. They're dead on board. Okay. Woo! They take two in the air, and they take all the the rest of the damage here. I mean, let's do this anyways, I guess. Sure. All right! <laughs> Look, I do not claim to be a standard expert. 
I'm sure there were a lot of turns there where it was not done properly, but I am just here trying my best to qualify for the Pro Tour, okay? We're just going one match at a time. You're, you know, this isn't Mogged. This isn't, and you know, any of those other people that crush all the standard challenges. This is just me. A limited player who is playing this just because I happen to be qualified for it. All right, round two here against Wooberg Mage. We are 1-0. We need six more to make day two. What is our opener? Um, it doesn't have a two drop, which is unfortunate, but we have enough interaction early where if they're playing a creature deck, I think we're going to do okay. All right, Monastery Swift Spear from the opponent here. And then we have Cut Down here. I'm hoping to cut down something bigger, but we'll see. That's a Phoenix Chick. And a Swift Spear. Nope. We're just going to get a Monastery Swift Spear here. And playing against Mono Red on the draw. Never a good place to be, especially after drawing a back-to-back -back lands. Very sad. But we do have Rafine, so hopefully Rafine can help us loot through whatever. Nice thing about No More Lies is that it exiles the Squee. They're down to two cards in hand. We're really leaning on this Rafine. We just drew a backup Rafine. We are blocking. I know they could have Monstrous Rage. They could have Witch Stalker's Frenzy. They could have all kinds of things. Oh, Inti. Okay. So they're probably going to pump the Phoenix Chick, is my guess. Interesting. I don't see this that often. Cacophony Scamp. That's nice. They just found another relevant play here. Okay, so um, as good of a blocker as Rafine is, I need the Rafine to find me more action, I think. Well, I mean, I can't, I can't just play Preacher the Schism and pass, I guess. That makes it really hard for their ground creatures to attack me. But the thing is, Phoenix Chick still kind of keeps getting in there. No, I'm going to attack. I just feel like I need to continue finding answers here, if possible. All right, here's the question. Do I Wandering Emperor the Phoenix Chick? Or the, the Inti even? It's possible. Yeah, I think I'd rather Wandering Emperor than Preacher of the Schism here. And I'm probably going to just like exile something and then make a 2-2. Make a They're probably targeting the Scamp. Actually, I just didn't even consider this. I can just make a 2-2. But let's see what they uh, reveal here. All right. All right. Yeah, this is better. Proliferate. Oh, I didn't even think about this. Oh, my gosh. My bad, folks. My, my bad. <laughs> I mean, I did still get a scamp, but they have they have a three three phoenix chick now. Uh, big big whoops is all I'm gonna say. Can you tell that I'm new to this format? I mean, I guess I could have exiled the scamp. That was like the line. And we're definitely blocking here. Monstrous Rage would be really bad. Felonious Rage? Felonious Rage is not too bad. We can, we can handle Felonious Rage. Uh, let's see. White. I guess there's no good way to do this, right? Whatever. All right. Uh, let's discard a land. All right. We we. I think we're um, I think we're stabilizing here. We have fairy mastermind plus go for the throat. I think we got a little bit lucky here that our opponent just didn't have more action here.
Let's block the Phoenix Chick. Do we block the Swift Spear? No. But they didn't have anything? Cacophony Scamp, okay. Play a Fairy Mastermind. All right. Ooh, that's also really interesting. Yeah, let's just do that. And I want to just make a giant life linker here. Yeah, so one, two, three, four. Yeah, this should be over. All right. You know, actually, I could have um, kept the no more lives over go for the throat, maybe. Um, just to make sure that the lifelink um, actually connects there. Because, um, I mean, I wanted to play the, the virtue of loyalty, but... All right, anyways, uh, let's bring in the cut down, the second Aklazot's be deepest betrayal. Let's bring in the Gix's command and the path of perils. Let's board out the fairy masterminds. And I do like that the wandering emperor gains me some life. I like the preachers. The virtues are okay as blockers because they have some ground creatures. The deep cavern bats is also okay. Generally, I'm not a big fan of counter spells against mono red, so I could see cutting that. You know, I'm just going to cut all the counter spells, and I'm just going to play a fairy. Ma like, I know it's not great, but the fairy mastermind still blocks like random two drops, so I just think it's probably better than just a counter spell. And uh, yeah, let's try that. Tap out control. On the draw, I could also consider cutting down to 26 lands. But I mean, we boarded in two fives. It's, it's probably fine. Oof. This hand, I think, is too slow. We just don't... We, we need to have something to play on turn two. Like, or, or a cut down or a path of peril. And without that, I think this is probably just too bad against mono red. Even though I have perfect mana. I don't think you can... Yeah, let's keep this. I don't think you can keep... I simply don't think you can keep a hand that doesn't either have a sweeper on three or just like something to do turns one or two. Let's play Rafine's Tower. What was that? Okay. Well, we drew go for the throat here too, which is nice. We're, we're going to take a lot of damage here. Oh, God. Okay. Six damage, geez. So I'm not going to play the bat yet, just because I have this Path of Peril. Ren's Resolve. Until the end of your next turn. Urobrask's Forge is really good. All right. Well... We'll do this. It's not going to be great, though, because they have the Forge, but it's the best that we got. I could have used Gopher to throw it to try to take a little less damage, but I'm hoping this is going to be okay. They're going to play the Forge. We're going to take one. Then we have Deep Cavern Bat plus Gopher to throw it into Aklazots, and we just have to hope that that's good enough. They didn't have a one mana play last turn, so there's a decent chance they don't have one this turn. Yeah, and I don't need to play the Restless Anchorage. I'd rather have Deep Cavern Bat plus Gopher to throw it available here. Interesting. Um, hmm. I guess we just take the Ren's Resolve. All right, taking two. We actually can't go for the throat this, can we? Oh no, we can. Hmm. 
or lightning strike. So they were going for the kill. They get the Ren's Resolve back, but we have Aklazots now. And it's Mount... Oh, Monstrous Rage, okay. All right, Aklazots. Here's the question, do we block? Or do we take it? Um... Will I be able to flip it next turn? I don't know. It gains me so much life. This is gonna do six- so if they find any way to deal damage to me, then I'm dead. Huh. Because the thing is, they have to cast the monster straight. I'm just gonna block. It just gains me a bunch of life. And I just need to draw any spell next turn, and I can flip this. Okay, so we'll play Denik. Restless Anchorage, and we'll flip this. Oh, no, they have one card in hand. I all, I'm guaranteed to flip it. Oh, that's perfect. All right, we'll take the four here. All right. Stabilize, stabilize. We have stabilized. Oh, we get a 1-1. One, one. All right. Play Preacher of the Schism. Play our land. And we are looking fine and dandy, probably. All right, we'll take whatever this is. All right! Playing against some aggressive decks here. We are 2-0, beating Mono Red and um, Boros Convoke. Let's keep it going. Wow, this is a lot of magic, by the way. It's not first to seven. It's um, first to seven match wins? I don't know. Do I need to break this up? Because I'm not going to play especially fast either, just because I, like, I don't play a ton of standard. Uh, this hand is kind of interesting. I don't have any blue sources, but I do have Cut Down Virtue and Preacher of the Schism, so I'm still going to keep. It's just, it's just a little bit awkward. Our opponent mulliganing to five, it seems. And we kind of mulligan, we have like a mulligan to six, right, with the No More Lies. Let's see what they're on. Ooh. Uh, actually, no, no, I'm going to play the land here. Because I have Virtue of Loyalty, so I want to go Virtue of Loyalty into Preacher. It was tempting to play the Restless Anchorage. Um, just because that would get, allow me to have no more lies up. But I think this is better. Wow, they didn't have uh, the 2 mana 1-1 one, one flash thing. War Leader's Call, okay. Well, things are looking pretty good for us. All right, and well, we were hoping to add to the board this turn, but we can at least kill whatever they play. So there's that at least. Okay, this is not, <laughs> it's not where you want to be, I'm just going to say. Now we have no more lies up too, yeah. The question here is whether or not we want to play the Virtue of Loyalty. I think so. These cutdowns are not quite as good against War Leader's Call, but I mean, they have to have some tokens here. All right, we got game one against Boros Convoke. They, they double mulligan though, so it's not the most impressive thing in the world. We are on the draw. We have the path. Of, I mean, we do have a nice, robust sideboard package for this matchup. What did I take out last time? I just don't even remember. You know, you know, I actually think, I mean, we saw how bad this was in the previous matchup. I'm going to cut this just because they have, um, just because they have um, the Cavern of Souls. 
I don't like this, though, because it's not a very good blocker, but I think I do... Uh, I only... I mostly just want Virtue of Loyalty just because it makes a 2-2. Two -two. That actually just blocks a lot of stuff. I'll keep the one copy of No More Lies, and we'll try this. All right, on the draw, Path of Peril, Preacher of the Schism, and Aklazots, and Five Lands. I think that's just a little bit too light on interaction. So I'm going to ship this back. I want Deep Cavern Bat or Path of Peril. Cut down, go for the throat, two drop. And this, this hand just doesn't do it for me. So let's, let's ship this back. And try again. Yeah, let's mulligan this. And oh yeah, this is a much better hand, I'm just going to say. Well, we have four lands, No More Lies, Path of Peril, and Rafine. I think I will put Dark Slick Shores back. Because if I put Dark Slick Shores back, it does make sure that I have double white and double black. For Wandering Emperor plus Path of Peril. Let's keep this and bottom dark slick shores. <laughs> we drew the one copy of No More Lies. And then they have the Cavern of Souls. No. All right. Thran Portal for white. Okay, so they're going to play um, Resolute Reinforcements. Which we can't counter anyways. But interesting, they had Cavern. Normally you want to name red for this, so I wonder what else they have here. Oh, I guess they could have the Evangelist. All right, we have no more lies. If they play like an evangelist, I probably just gonna I'm probably just gonna use no more lies. It's nice that they didn't have the um, the knight errant. That's like by far the scariest card in this matchup, just because it fuels them up and puts a big threat in play. Um, if they don't play something, I could just run out Rafine instead of running out the path of peril. If they play another creature, then we definitely do have to play Path of Peril. Okay, they played Mount uh, Sokinzan. Are they just cracking a clue? What's happening here? Oh, Gleeful Demol Demolition? They could have Gleeful Demolition. Colorless Red, Sack a Clue. Okay, well, that's, that's not that scary. I mean, if they play a Novice Inspector, I'm going to kill it. I'm probably going to run out Path of Peril. I just feel like with these three creatures in particular, I don't need to run out the Path of Peril. So I think I can just run out the Rafine here. They could have Lithomantic Barrage. This deck tends to play like two copies of that card. In which case I will take some number of, some amount of damage here. But Gix's Command, also a very good draw here. And they have a bunch of cards here. So it's not, this is not going to be trivial by any means. This is very, very scary. Very scary position to be in. We do have, definitely have some of the important sideboard tools. But you saw in that first match, just drawing a Path of Peril doesn't mean that it's the end of the world. It just makes it so that you can slow them down a pretty significant amount. Takazia's Welcome. Oh, should I... You know, I might want to board in... Um, I might want to board in... Um, Destroy Evil then, right? Or it also makes cards like... Uh, uh, no More Lies a little bit better.
All right, we're not gonna. It's gonna be really hard to grind through the Takazia's welcome. We'll see what happens. They might have an Imidane's recruiter here. We do have a Gix's command, which is pretty nice, depending on what they choose to play here. At least it only triggers once a turn, so it's not that bad. It's like it's kind of like a like a like an arena type card. All right, Knight Errant of Eos, okay. Well, I'm glad we have this uh, Gix's command, that's all I'm gonna say. The question is, do I need to use it right now? I don't know that I do. Let's get rid of the cut down. Oh no, I, I want to pump my Rafine first before I do that, right? Obviously, yeah. Or I can actually um, go for the throat this anyways. For the time being, I'm not too concerned. With this go for the throat, I'm just, I think, I'm not that concerned about these three one ones in play just yet. I do have to be mindful of Imidane's Recruiter, definitely. Witch Stalker's Frenzy. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. In which case, let's kill Knight Errant. That's just far too much damage. Now, I can't put two uh, lifelink counters on Rafine. Oh, or I can just play Aklazots. That seems better. Do I want to attack? I think I do. We just gotta just keep jamming. All right, this is a scary turn. We do have Aklazots in play. They can go Imidane's Recruiter. If they go like Imidane's Recruiter plus another Witch Stalker Frenzy, then we're in a lot of trouble. Oh, or Case of the Gateway Express, then I think we're dead. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, yeah. Wow, they, they, did, they did have it, okay. Yeah, I mean, there's not, there's not too much like there's not too much to do there. All right, good beats. We are on the play this time. Witch Stalker Frenzy is quite annoying. I don't think I care that much about Takazia's welcome or whatever. Although, maybe I do just want no more lies. How good is Cutdown in this matchup? This is, this is, yeah, like, if I'm on the play, how important is it to have Cutdown? Maybe it's not as important because I have all these sweepers? I don't know. I think, especially on the play, having all my two drops to go two drops into Rafine is pretty nice. I don't know, this is weird, but I'm going to like shave two cutdowns and play with two more, no more lies. And um, just so that I have a few more ways to counter their bigger things like Takazi's Welcome. I guess this isn't going to be especially good at countering Witch Stalker's Frenzy anyways, but it's still something. And I think on the play with all the sweepers, uh, the need for removal goes down just a little bit. Right, because like my creatures can just get in front of things anyways. And it's not like their cheap th threats do the most damage outside of the Warden. So, yeah, it's, it's curious. It's curious how good the cutdown actually even is. Um, like, I don't think you want to draw a bunch of them in the matchup.
All right, I'm going to keep this. We're going to need some lands here. We have two lands, Deep Cavern Bat, Double Gopher to Throat, Preacher, and Wandering Emperor. So any land allows us to go Deep Cavern Bat into Preacher, which I think is pretty nice. All right. Our opponent kept their seven. Not a good sign. But we do have the bat. All right, we drew a land right away, which is very good. So let's go Deep Cavern Bat. Take your gleeful thing or whatever you might have. Takazia's welcome, Knight Errant, Imodane's recruiter. I think you just take the Knight Errant every time. Good things don't happen when your opponent's Knight Errant you. So let's try to slow that down if we can. You know, not the most explosive hand that our opponent kept. Oh my gosh. That's ridiculous. They top deck the Gleeful Demolition. <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to attack with our Flying Life Linker and then jam Preacher of the Schism. They do have Imodane's Recruiter. We can block, but we will take a lot of damage. So it is curious what they're going to do here. Like, are they going to just play Takazi's Welcome? Or are they going to um, play the Recruiter? Uh, okay. So And they took a, they took a pain there. They took a pain. So I also want to take a pain here. Because that allows me to draw an extra card, right? Huh. All right. So let's let's do that. Let's go black. Let's just kill this. So that I can draw an extra card here. There we go. And now, yeah, like Preacher of the Schism has this weird dynamic where if you're tied, you get both triggers. So with the Pain Lands, you want to like manage your life total so that you can get tied with them, in a sense. Let's counter this. Huh. I mean, keeping their board clear is probably good. Oh, no, that was bad. Ah, Paul. I literally was talking about how you want to paint and draw the extra card. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, well. Now I can't paint. That was, yeah. Oh, well. I think we're still going to be fine. <laughs> All right. Want to run out the Wandering Emperor here, if I can. Imodane's Recruiter, okay. I do have Restless Anchorage, so it's kind of awkward if they want to attack. Yeah, let's just play Wandering Emperor. Like I said, in this matchup, you still just want to try to keep things clear. So I'm going to make a token and block the Recruiter. They could have Witch Talker's Frenzy, I guess, if they want to kill my Preacher. Sure. Uh, ooh, Deep Cavern Bat was a great draw. Huh. Um. Let's take that. Let's put a counter there. Play this. And kill them in the skies. Yeah, I mean, this is looking really, really great for us, so. Oh, well, that's, that is the card that gets them back into this, potentially. I don't think I don't think it will, but so if we kill the knight errant, then we draw a card. Hmm. Yeah. 
Yeah, I just don't see them killing us and we gain a bunch of life here, so. All right, this should do it. I would be pretty shocked if they find a way to kill us here. Like this is, even, even, even with Imodane's Recruiter, it's not enough. That's 13 damage. Still, that's 15 damage. <laughs> it's 15 damage. Woo, that was close. <laughs> Maybe I should have made a token. All right. Woo. Three and oh. Three and oh. Just playing against all aggro stuff. Man, those preachers of the schism have been very impressive. I, I think it's much better than a wedding announcement against these aggressive decks. Well, at least the nice thing is that these Qs pop very quickly. So we are 3 0. See what we're up against now. Um, oh, this is interesting. We have Denik, No More Lies, Double Cut Down, and Deep Cavern Bat with no Black Sore. So I can go turn two Denik and then No More Lies, but then if I draw. I don't think this hand's good enough. I just. I like being able to cast my spells. Let's keep this, and I'm going to bottom I Ganjo. I just, I think, I don't think I have enough mana to channel, and I'd rather just have good fixing. All right, Broker's Hideout. We are playing against the Teamer, um, Teamer Aftermath Analyst deck, so that is a tough matchup. I don't have that much cyborg in the cyborg. Like, I'm not playing a bunch of unlicensed hearses and such. So it, it, this can be a t difficult matchup for sure. I do have a couple of copies of Tishana's Tidebinder in the sideboard to maybe slow down some Aftermath Analyst shenanigans. Um, but yeah, it's not going to be a great matchup here for us. We have turn two Bat into turn three Preacher. That's going to have to go a long way here. All right, they have Nissa. Oh, Ossification. Nice little tech there. Um, Aftermath Analyst and Nyssa. Hmm. I don't care about the Aftermath Analyst because I have cut down. But Nyssa is kind of pro problematic. So I'll take the Nyssa. Just because I don't have a way to kill it just yet. If they use the Ossification, then I can maybe set up a No More Lies potentially. It's not great. It's not great. Like, ossification is quite annoying here. Like, what do I cyborg against this? Do I cyborg in destroy evil? It's like, doesn't really have any other targets. I want to keep go for the throat because it kills Aftermath Analyst and Nyssa. Oh, Spelunky. Okay, maybe, maybe I do, maybe I do board in a destroy evil. We'll see. Yeah, but their deck's just doing their thing. And we are not really providing that much pressure here. So. They're going to go Spelunking. And basically, we're kind of just all in on this, like, Deep Cavern Bat into a Preacher of the Schism. Oh, that's actually interesting. I'm wondering if this is better or worse than... If Rafine is better or worse than Preacher. I think I like Rafine more. Because I don't need... Yeah. I don't really want this Aklazots. And this gets me more land, more draw, more draws at mana. I don't need to worry about cut down just yet. They're probably going to wait on their aftermath analyst until they have six mana. Although they only have two lands in the graveyard. 
This also puts more pressure on them. They now have the choice of going for ossification on Rafine or ossification on Deep Cavern Bat. Looks like they're going for Rafine, which is, I mean, obviously it's good for them, but this does mean that I don't have to kill their Nissa or they don't get their Nissa, right? And I don't think they're going to play Aftermath Analyst here. Oh, they are. Okay. Uh, give me a black source, maybe? What is this? All right. So they have some spice. They're playing some different stuff. Return target card from your graveyard to your hand. All right. Well, I cannot afford to let this untap. And we attack. But like I said, I just don't think we have enough pressure to like kill, kill them. So I think we're pretty big dogs here right now. I guess this is kind of cool with all the self-mill. It's kind of expensive and clunky, though, if you draw it in your opener. But, I mean, some decks play Galvanic Iteration, and I think this is probably just replacing that card. That gets them four lands. All right, let's counter it, I guess. The thing is, they're going to play Virtue, and we're just going to lose... <laughs> Oh, man. Well, we're trying to slow them down as much as we can. Huh. I think this Gopher to Throat could still be useful if they kill my Nyssa, so... I do like the Deep Cavern Bat, if, especially if their plan is to just uh, slam Virtue of Strength. Could very easily be the case with two cards left in their hand. So it looks like they're not playing blue? Maybe they are, but they have not been fetching... Oh, I guess this can't fetch an island. Blue for the Memory Deluge and the um, Ill-Timed Explosion seems pretty important. Oh, they're targeting my Deep Cavern Bat. So I think this might be World Soul's Rage. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, I mean, this is a very dangerous deck to play against. But you get to see it in action. I mean, you saw this. I posted a video about this yesterday. This deck is sweet when it goes off. Gets a little bit better after sideboard. Definitely. When I have a lot more counter magic, and I can kind of replace some of my removal spells with counter magic. Like, certainly remove the cutdowns and the aclazots, and replace that with duresses and disdainful strokes and such. I mean, hopefully they're just out of action otherwise, but we'll see. I definitely want that land. So let's see what we're... Okay, we'll pitch cut down. This is all we got. What's your last card? It's a forest. Okay. Let's just kill this. Now. And now it's just a matter of time. It's just like, can we kill them before they top deck their way out of this? They have plenty of time, by the way. They just have so many really powerful top decks. But also keep in mind, this deck plays 30 lands. So they also have a lot of draws that are just blinks. But given how much time that they're taking this turn, I think they found something. Could be a World Soul's Rage. Nope. All right, sure. Virtue. Interesting that they went for... I guess they want value. Because they could have gone for Aftermath Analyst and get more lands. But I guess they, they might have most of the lands already. 
I mean, just slam virtue at this point, right? It seems pretty easy. Like your hand, I know, I see your hand. Just play your virtue. No reason not to. Sure. All right, they have all the mana in the world. Huh. What do I want to discard? Do I want Preacher or Denik just to have a flyer in play? I think I might just want a flyer. This just helps me kill them faster. Hold on. Yeah. I am I am like all in on trying to kill them as quickly as possible here. Three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten with the restless anchorage. Okay. Yeah, if they drew World Souls Rage, we're dead. Oh no. <laughs> What are they looking at? What are you looking at? Oh, man. Yeah. These stack, by the way. I think whenever they tap a land, what, how much mana did I get? Six? Yeah. What, what a top deck. I mean, not much we can do, right? It is what it is. Sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes you don't. All right. Uh... All right, moving into sideboard here. Definitely want Tishana's Wade Bind, Wade Bind, Tishana's Tide Binder. Disdainful Strokes. Don't want any of that removal. Destroy Evil is interesting because of ossification, but I think I'm just gonna let them kill my stuff. And uh, let's figure out what else we want to take out. There's Go for the Throat. Go for the Throat's interesting because it is it like they do have Nissa as something that you want to kill. But like how many of these do we want? I do think I don't I, I do think I don't want to cut any of my twos just because I think it's really important to pressure them. Although Denik does kind of get blocked by all their stuff. They're gonna be at a pretty high life total. Maybe I'm not drawing cards off Preacher of the Schism. I think with four aftermath analysts, four Nissa, like go for the throw, it's still something that I want. Maybe we can shave a couple of these. And we have lowered our curve considerably. Maybe we can cut like a basic. Yeah, something like that. Most decks play 27 lands. <laughs> All right, playing first, we will keep no two drops, sadly, but we do have some really good three mana cards. Let me know what you think about how you're supposed to sideboard in this matchup. I'm, I'm not entirely sure. Do you keep some number of go for the throats? Do you try to keep your curve super low? Do you just not care about wandering? Maybe like maybe a wandering emperor is not good. It is good against sweepers in particular and allows you to play like a draw go game, which is pretty nice in this matchup but you're not really exiling anything. It's just to make tokens. Yeah, Tidebinder is super sweet in this matchup because if they just like play a fetch land, if they play a fetch land, you can just counter it. Although here I'm, I'm probably interested in just playing a turn three preacher, the schism. Start getting some value right away. Make some tokens.
Oh, ossification. Okay. Interesting. Um, yeah, let's just, let's just pass. Let's keep up to Shauna's Tidebinder slash, um, uh, Rafine. <laughs> Wait, I've never done this before. <laughs> they just have a River Tears Outlook in play? I, okay. Oh, man. I... <laughs> All right. I mean, it's still countered the land. It's actually good that it's in play. I just think it's really funny. So they have four mana? They can World Souls Rage back a River Tears Outlook or Virtue maybe? Yeah, the um, Tishana's Tidebinder was kind of a last second addition. So two to my face. They get a land. They go up to 22. So Preacher will make us 1-1s. One -ones. And then we'll go Fairy Mastermind into Rafine. They're going to have... Four mana available? Okay. Oh, Disdainful Stroke is very nice. Oh, uh, Auto Tapper trying to sabotage me. Let's go blue. White. Black. Rafine. Um, I don't actually know. Well, they have too much mana for No More Lies to be good, right? So, I wanted to make this five toughness so that they can't World Souls Rage for four. I'm hoping Disdainful Stroke is still going to be relevant. I'm not playing any negates. I chose to play Duresses over negates. So, we'll see how this goes. Next turn, I do probably want to save the Rafine. Uh, oftentimes, these decks play like one copy of Lithoman one or two copies of Lithomantic Barrage. And having this be a six toughness creature, I think, can be pretty relevant. Let's see, they have one land? We'll let that, we'll let that resolve. All right, I need to, I hate playing with full control, but I think I need to. Oh no, never mind, it doesn't matter. They're at 18. All right, um, I mean, I think Deep Cavern Bat's gonna be good here, so let's just figure, uh, run that out before Oh, Sunfall. I see. Let's keep this disdainful stroke, shall we? <laughs> well, they only have one play, and we're going to disdainful stroke it. And that should do it. All right, game three. One, two, three, four, five. 
All right, so that is their sweeper that they play. Sunfall, good to know. And let's try to think about how we want to sideboard for this matchup. So, like I said, ossification is kind of annoying, but like, do I really? Like, the thing is, it's the only target. So, destroy evil just doesn't seem great. Um, yeah, it doesn't seem great. Yeah, I think I don't mind this. Like, I don't think Preacher of the Schism is particularly good anyways. They're gaining a bunch of life. And so oftentimes it doesn't... Like, I really wanted to draw me cards in this matchup, but it won't always do that. Um, I am curious how many copies of Go for the Throat I want in this matchup. But given that they have the Aftermath Analyst plus Nissa, I probably just need to keep some. And then I can always kind of, like, loot it away if I really need to. So... Yeah, I guess I guess this is just it. Maybe I play one destroy evil. <laughs> you can always loot it away. Didn't I just say that? All right, we'll we'll try three go for the throat, one destroy evil, and lose badly because we did. <laughs> I, look, we have the two Tishana's Tidebinders to also counter Aftermath Analyst in some degree to some to some degree. So I think having the one, like with with them having pre uh, presumably four ossifications, like it should be okay. Not having a two drop is really unfortunate. I I think I'm gonna keep just like we have our colors, we have a disdainful stroke. Um, not the most explosive start, but you don't need the most explosive start to beat them after sideboard because you have a lot more disruption. You just have to time things properly. And cutting three drops makes sense because we're all, we're bringing in the two Tidebinders, so, and, and Kaito, so we're going pretty heavy on, on threes. All right, so our opponent mulligan to what, six? That's the thing, I mean, even for, even for our opponent mulled to five, we, we're, our hand isn't particularly good at slowing anybody down. Some decks of Esper have been playing like one or two copies of Lord Skitter. It's something that I chose not to play because I like Preacher in most matchups outside of this. But particularly in this matchup, Lord Skitter is much better because it lets you eat lands out of the graveyard while putting a ton of pressure on the battlefield. And our opponent did mold a five. All right. Couple of, uh, what are these lands called? Do, do, do you know? Can somebody tell me? I'm just calling them the standard sack lands. All right, I'm just going to, you know, I'm going to just play the anchorage here because I can't stroke anything turn three anyways. Yeah, our hand is super slow. We drew back-to-back -back lands, but maybe if our opponent has a bad start. But if they play Aftermath Analyst, we're just in trouble. Okay. Well then. I'm going to play Rafine here. Yeah, if they get um if they have another land, yeah, we just had no removal, just nothing. We just drew like we drew oh god, this we I mean, we might just lose. Like we drew Rafine we drew two Rafines and two lands as our draw step. So our opponent mulled a five. They're unmulliganing here. This is kind of a disaster. Kind of a disaster. I played the Rafine here to loot through these Rafines and also Preacher not being particularly great. Like, I just want to find more disruption. They're going to find, like, an Aftermath Analyst. Yeah, this is, this is so bad. So, so bad. Oh, well. Them's the beats. Oh, and now they're looking at a land. So, yeah, that kind of an ideal start for them. So now they have an ossification here for the Rafine. I would love to find a removal spell here for... Well, I need two removal spells even. Okay, they got back World Soul's Rage. 
which doesn't do a ton. All right, let's pitch one of these. Here's my question. Like, what, what, what do I kill? I think it's the Aftermath Analyst. It gets them four lands. Right? Yeah, I don't know. The thing is, there's there's a pretty good likelihood that they just find another Nissa if they play about uh, a a the the double land. Oh man, can you imagine if I kept the Iganjo instead? I kept the Odawara, thinking it might be more relevant against cards like Ossification. Well, this is where negate would have been better. Okay. All right. Not too bad here for us. What are they doing? Oh, World Souls Rage for one to trigger Nissa. That's a thing you can do. So next turn, I think I go Preacher plus Disdainful Stroke up. Yeah, I mean, that gets them a land and a trigger from Nyssa. So. <laughs> oh, they hit the Analyst instead of the Nyssa. That's unfortunate. Yeah, so they're going to have a ton of mana now. They're going to have a ton of mana. And we're going to have to lean pretty heavily on the Disdainful Stroke to get us out of this. Yeah, they're getting so many lands back. It's kind of wild. But it is what it is. Yeah. So at this point, we've kind of uh, we're giving up on the mana denial strategy, and we're just on the hey, we have this hard counter. I hope this is good enough. And this uh, Dryad's revival is actually kind of annoying. They found another Aftermath Analyst. Sure. Okay. We are now playing... Yeah, so the only downside of not playing the version with the blue is you can't just mill, like, memory deluges with all the mana that you have, which makes it really difficult for these control decks. But maybe if they have a bunch of Dryads Revivals, like, more than one, that's going to change things. But, like, at this point, this doesn't matter that much because let's just say that they have a bunch of mana. Like, we're going to lean very, very heavily on this Disdainful Stroke to counter our world souls rages hopefully we can find the other disdainful stroke the thing is we only have two strokes though right we only have the two strokes but having the one right now is pretty big because they only have one card in hand now they do have the dryas revival which they can use to get back world souls rage all right did a little fast forwarding there a little editing magic All right, they got back World Souls Rage. And I assume they're going to go for the kill here with Aftermath Analyst. And we have the stroke, and then we just hope. <laughs> That's it. That's all we got.
So our opponent World, Sol World Souls raged us for 10. I think I'm just going to let that resolve. And a bunch more triggers. Fast forward magic once again. Brrr. All right, last trigger. No attacks from them. That was it. All right. I'm going to play this. Only because I want to be able to play Rafine. That's this card, Rafine's Tower. Or sorry, Shattered Sanctum. So because I can cycle this if I need. Happy enough trading for those two. I guess I could have made it a 3-5. I don't think that really matters, though. We'll see what they do. Yep, Ossification resolves. Okay. I mean, what if they're just out of gas? It's possible, right? What's their last card? Nissa, okay. Very mastermind. Okay, that's a go for the throat. Let's kill it. And I'm not going to attack with the anchorage. And let's get to town. I'm going to cycle this if they don't play anything. They're at 36. <laughs> Cycle. Do they have an instant speed something or another? Nope. Um, one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Wait, hold on. I do need to play this. Yep. Let's attack. Create a map. Uh, oh, they have a removal spell? Oh, wow. Yep, that's good. Oh, this thing's a vampire. <laughs> that's nice. We'll keep that as just a threat, I guess. We need to find a way to kill them, right? So... They have infinite time, though. This is not ideal. They're gonna are they gonna cycle through the blood here? Like we're leaning very heavily on this disdainful stroke. Okay, temporary lockdown plus ossification. I'm just gonna throw out. Don't really want to be doing both of those, in my opinion. My professional opinion. Lithomantic Barrage? They're looking at my 2-2. Two -two. Sunfall? We'll let Sunfall resolve. Oh. Yeah, that's going to kill us. The thing is, this thing has flashback too. Yeah, that's going to kill us. Man, what a draw. Dryad's Revival. Real deal. Like, there's just not much I can do, right? Yeah, yeah, we're dead. Oh well. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Oh well. I'm not gonna, I mean, we're just dead. They're gonna get it back and re replay it. But we tried, we certainly tried. We are now one loss away from uh, getting eliminated here. We are three and one. Hoping we can rattle off four more here. That would be really, really nice. I think if you really want to beat that lands deck, 
I mean, they mold a five and they beat us. Um, you're you're going to need just more graveyard hate. Yeah, you you definitely do. So, um, I thought maybe the tide binders would be good enough, and it gives me a, a wider swath of card. Like I didn't want a card that's only good in one matchup. Like unlicensed hearse is only good in this matchup, right? Cutsoul's flanker is a little more versatile, but also only really good in this matchup. But given that this is going to be played among by a lot of good players, maybe I should still just play some. At least one. Oh, we're playing against a good player here. CFT Sock. They're going to be much better at this game than me, but I think they play Esper last time. Yep, they're on Esper Legends, it looks like. Oh no, no, no. They're on some they're on some jank. They're on like that four or five color legends deck. Alright. I don't I don't even know what I'm supposed to do in this match. Like, do I play Denik? Yeah, well, they hit Cavern of Souls, so now my normalize doesn't even do anything. Ooze. Alright, we're, we're definitely countering that. Alright, well, um... Not looking great here, team. Well, we drew the Igonjo. At least that kills Inti. What does this do? Three Exalia. Yeah. Actually, this was super risky. <laughs> if they played a land, then I was in trouble. Whoops. Slogurk. All right. Oh, man. This is brutal. Aklazots. Okay. All right. Well, this is probably a bad matchup, but I don't actually know. <laughs> Uh, especially because we're not really drawing any action. We drew like nine, we four, five, six, seven, eight, nine lands. Like, how do we beat Aklazots? We don't? And the Cavern of Souls makes my counters a lot worse too. I don't know how many caverns they play. They get a flyer here? Oh my gosh. This is brutal. Alright, I gotta look up this deck. I haven't actually played against this deck. So... Because, like, this game is lost. What is this, like, four color legends or something? All right, let, let's, uh, oh, all right, here we go. CFT sock. What you got? Some Ronas and Sloger. Okay, well, let's just, let's just move on here. Nothing, nothing to see. Let's move on. Only two Cavern of Souls. Okay. All righty. Well, that was a sound beating. Akalazot's certainly good in this matchup. Um... Gix's command is probably good. Kaito on the play I like against mid-range decks. Um, I don't think Stroke is particularly good. There's three Urtais and Anaklazots. But I just don't think it's going to do enough a lot of the time. Tishana's Tidebinder, I mean, they have a lot of triggered abilities. So I think the Tidebinder can actually be quite good. They have Inti and Rona. Cut down is destroy evil good? No, destroy evil doesn't have that many targets. And there's not that many enchantments either. 
All right, and how do we sideboard? Well, I like Fairy Mastermind against the Rona. Deep Cavern Bat also seems good. I mean, all of these cards, all the two seem good. I just got to figure out what I need to cut. Maybe it is the counter magic. Because I kind of like all the creatures. I don't think I need all of these, especially on the play. And I like Gix's command just as a catch-all. So let's try this. Let's try the most proactive version of this deck and see if that is good enough. But I am not sure. Four Slogurks. Maybe I want Destroy Evil for Slogurk? I don't know. Go for the Throat, Gix's command. I mean, it's a mid-range matchup. They're gonna ha probably have hand disruption and such. I'll keep it because I can cycle the Rafine's Tower as well. But it's nice that we do have the go for the throat this time around. And Preacher of the Schism was an excellent draw. We are going to kill whatever it is that they play. They didn't play anything. <laughs> Relic of Legend seems pretty problematic. But I guess if I just like kill all their things, it's not too bad. I, uh, yeah. All right, so they went with the Inti, which we're going to kill, into Preacher of the Schism. And try our best from there. Okay. Liliana of the Veil. We got back up. I'm going to play the tower. I, th I think I want to be hitting my land drops here anyways. And they're going to tick up the Liliana. We're, we'll discard Shattered Sanctum probably. Oh, if they have back-to-back -back Lilianas, that would be kind of annoying. Okay, because can they? Oh no, it's tap and untap legendary creature. Okay. Long goodbye. Boo. All right. Well, we're certainly playing Kaito. And we will make. A ninja. All right. Okay, well, um, I can get two creatures back. Let's loot first. Okay, well, can this card cut down? Yeah, this is like pretty sad. But it's our only line, like we just have to play Gix. Like they don't have a creature in play, but I think we just have to play Gix's Command to just get a th some things back, because they have Liliana. Alright, they're going to make us discard one of them. So Liliana's going to be super good here. Yep.
All right. Well, at least I have fodder to sacrifice for the Liliana. Man, this Liliana completely destroyed us, by the way. No! What? Oh. Oh, that's gross. What? I guess I shouldn't have played a land? I mean, I didn't expect Urtai off the top. Oh my gosh. Oh, that was brutal. All right. Man, the fact that we drew Akalazots too off of that, oh, that's so sick. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, well, let's tech Liliana. Let's play Virtue. Let's play our land. I mean, at this point, they should just Edict us, probably. I'll discard my 2-2, or sack my 2-2. We need some help. Another Aklazots would be great. <laughs> no, not for them. For me. Oh, we're so dead. <laughs> All right. Good beats. Good beats. Good beats. All right, that was a sweet deck that they played. And uh, sadly, that was a sweet deck. That was a sweet deck. Sadly, this is the end of our run. What, you know, on the bright side, this is not like a seven hour video, but we went three and two. Uh, you know, as you know, I played mostly limited and I did play enough to get to Mythic and Constructed, but I'm certainly not going to be on the level of some of these other top players. CFT Sock, I believe, is that, is that Ray Zhang? I'm not sure, but I know that uh, CFT Sock is a very, very good player. And so I am not surprised that I got completely thwomped. Is thwomp a word? But uh, let's collect our gems. And uh, that'll be it for us for Constructed. Because you know what's going to happen now? You know what's going to happen now? It's back to playing some Limited very, very shortly. So this is going to come out on Sunday. And then on Monday, I'm going to try to... like We're going to have some filler content here, of course. Um... Until OTJ, I believe, comes out on Tuesday. And this is the deck that we tried. But of course, standard is going to change. Once OTJ comes out, there looks to be lots of powerful cards in OTJ. So this is going to be kind of the last iteration of standard that you're going to see until things change with the release of OTJ. But that'll do it here for me for now. I gave it a shot with Constructed, but we're going to go back to Limited where I'm in my happy place. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Feel free to hit the like or subscribe button for more daily videos just like this. If you've enjoyed the content and wanted to support the channel in another way, I did launch my Patreon channel. The link to the Patreon is in the description below. Shout out to all the current patrons. Without you, it would be much more difficult for me to continue making content like this. Right now, the uh, Discord is going to start getting really active as we start gearing up towards OTJ and uh, doing our best to climb as high as we can because the road to rank 1 is going to be coming back online the moment OTJ Outlaws of Thunder Junction comes out, which will be on Tuesday. But until then, I will catch you next time.